remember where I was going, now look at where I'm going. Don't throw your hands up, put it up your hands, and I ain't talking about your hands, I'm talking about the 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 Sports media coming at you with Tidal Wave Talk for the sixth time this season. Alabama takes on the Texas A&M Aggies. Going to be a good showdown at Kyle Field. We got it in the background. I figured we do since it's SEC play and everything. We try to get the um, the stadiums where the game will be played. Maybe we could do that going forward for Tidal Wave Talk, kind of like how we do with other previews. I want to go ahead and apologize because I had some tech issues on my end recording this. So I don't know how the intro turned out. If it sucked, great. If not, um, then (laughs) I guess it worked out. I don't know. We'll know when it premieres. But as long as you guys can hear me and get the the feel of the video, uh, that'll be great. So what about this game? Uh, Well... I'll say this, as my phone goes off a little bit. um, So, looking at this series overall, they've met quite a few times, but it's kind of one of those things where you look at it in the past decade when the Aggies moved in the SEC in 2012 from the Big 12 the Crimson Tide have a 9-2 and two record over the Aggies in 11 games, and those two wins came from Johnny Manziel in 2012, that first season. And then the second win for Texas A&M came with Jimbo Fisher being the first assistant to beat Nick Saban with Seth Small hit a field goal in 2021. The last time Alabama went to Kyle Field, can an upset happen? I absolutely believe it is possible, but I also will say that I think Alabama going into this game probably is the better team, but I think it's a fair matchup. I think it's even. Both teams have one loss, uh, four and one. So, and they're both undefeated in conference play. So this will be a 2.30 game on CBS. This will be the game of the week for the guys. 3.30 Eastern. The line has Alabama by 14 and a half. And I look at this game and I say, it's all going to be on offense. That's how Jimbo Fisher is. He's got Bobby Petrino as the OC, Tommy Reese for Alabama, and Nick Saban, who's a defensive guy, is probably going to have the defense ready and prepared. You're going to see some points scored by Texas A&M. You're going to see some points scored by Alabama. I do think it'll be a close game. I think that line for 14 and a half, honestly, I think it's a joke. I think it'll be closer than that. I think that this can be a dogfight for both teams. And I, I think that when you break it down, both teams have struggled, but you notice like it's been on one side of the ball for each team. I think that I, I think the defense is good for Texas A&M, uh, but like the secondary has been a little bit suspect. I do think Alabama has struggled defensively a little bit more than a- the Aggies have. Alabama comes into this game one and a half point favorite. That should tell you a lot that about so i i should change this i had saw somewhere else where it was 14 and a half so i don't know where i got that from and i apologize the line according to espn is actually one and a half so and we look at this game here and the over under is 46 and a half so when, when you look at what could be in this game the different scenarios, the different outcomes that we could have. Could it be a game-winning field goal for the Aggies like it was two years ago? What if Alabama turns the cards a little bit and gets their own game winner? 
What if it's defense that shows up and wins you the game? It'll be interesting to see. Uh, at some point, it'll be dark at Kyle Field, I'm sure. The sun will set. and It is pretty cool to see an environment like that get rocking at night. So I do hope it's close. I love games like this. Uh, this is going to be a game that's going to continue, I'm assuming, throughout like the changes of the SEC. So when you look at this, it's Jimbo Fisher and it's Nick Saban. Two foes, kind of had some drama off last offseason. Jimbo said he was done with Nick Saban. They're meeting on the field. It'll be interesting to see if we get a smile from both of them uh, meeting this year. It'll be interesting to see if they even shake hands. I don't know where things stand with them in 2023. We haven't haven't had that drama this offseason. So um, I'm sure they got much respect. I mean, they were able to shake hands after last year's game. Alabama got the revenge, but it'll be a fun game to watch. I'm excited. We will be live on the channel for it, 2.30 Central time, so it'll be about – we'll probably go live around 2.20 Central, maybe 10 minutes before it comes on, and we'll uh, we'll talk about it. We'll get it ready and going. Uh, It'll be a stream, uh, first Alabama game this season. So I'm excited and – prepared and we're looking forward to it so as far as this game what you need to know it's Jalen Milrow and it actually is not Connor Wegman and it's not Haynes King remember Haynes King is at Georgia Tech Connor Wegman suffered an injury and he's out for the season I think he like broke his calf or his ankle it was season ending and so it's it's going to be hard for them without Connor Wegman. I wish him nothing but the best. I hope he gets better. I hope he gets healed up. Lord help him. But I, I just – you don't want to see anyone get hurt. So with that being said, it, it, it's probably going to be number 14 LSU transfer Max Johnson, who they turn to, a soft, sophomore from Athens, Georgia. He's got to be the guy. He's got to be the guy that steps in. He's got to be the guy that saves the day for Texas a and We'll see if he can save the day. It's going to be Jalen Milrow's show for Alabama. They've struggled offensively, but they seem to have found their rhythm last week. They have 363 total yards. A&M, 443 total yards. It's not even close between passing. Uh, it's almost 100 a hundred uh, different difference in yardage. So Le'Veon Moss, part of that recruiting class last year, uh, really good, 46 carries, 267 yards, 76 yards, I'm sorry, and two touchdowns. Jermaine Burton leads for Alabama, Evan Stewart for A&M and receiving – uh, Burton with eight receptions, 189 yards and two touchdowns. Evan Stewart, 24 receptions, 357 yards and four touchdowns. Am I worried as a fan about this game if I'm Alabama? Yes, absolutely. Tough road environment in the SEC. Uh, you're playing an elite offense, great offensive minds in Jimbo and then Bobby Petrino. They'll come up with something. They'll find a way to get it done. But you got to think Nick Saban's a defensive guru and mastermind. He has struggled in games like this, but he's also been able to cope and, you know, try to fix things and adapt and just get prepared. So I I think Alabama's going to be all right. I do think it's going to be a close game. And I think it's definitely going to be a game that everyone should keep their eye on this weekend in college. Just one quick on you guys today. Prediction time for Alabama, Texas A&M. Again, the spread is really close. (laughs) It's one and a half Alabama. So uh, 46 and a half is the over under. Based on my score, I'm going to say take the over and buy quite a bit, actually. I expect some good offense. 
I'm going to say this. It's going to be a one-possession game. It's going to come down to the final play. And I think what's going to happen is the Alabama defense gets it done. And speaking of, we got to talk a little bit about the defense. Caleb Downs, a true freshman, he's hitting hard. He's finding momentum, getting in the rhythm of things for the Alabama Crimson Tide. So I think that the defense will show up. I think you got some big bodies on that defensive front. You know, Jaheim Otis has talked about Dallas Turner uh, is the main guy. Uh, you know, lost guys last year like Henry Toto and Will Anderson, of course. Justin E. Boigby, Jaheim Otis, I mentioned, Tim Smith. You could go down the list there. Uh, so much. The thing about this, and we talked about it in – the I think the Middle Tennessee preview, we talked about how this season is going to be rotation on defense. Rotation is going to be key, getting the guys to have different reps, get, giving everyone a chance. I think Nick Saban wants to do that. I th think he has done that very well, and I think that um, it'll probably play out in this game a little bit, mix it up. Uh, so off uh, A&M's offense. Just take a chance on these younger guys. I'm telling you, it's it's going to be okay. It's, I, I don't know, I, Alabama, they have too much talent to lose too many games this year. And I know people want to say that because of the quarterback situation, they um they're gonna they're gonna fail. But I really think this defense is gonna carry this team, and I think they could carry them to a win on Saturday. Dallas Turner, five and a half sacks for 31 yards. Chris Braswell, thir three and a half sacks, 19 yards. Dante Lawson, two sacks for 18 yards. Tresman Marshall, Georgia transfer, one and a half sacks for eleven yards. Right, Caleb Downs forced a fumble, did not recover it. Uh, I think he forced one, and Kendrick Blackshear picked it up. Uh, you know, Kool Aid, Kool Aid McKinstry's good. He's got to get some picks. You know, he's got four dependent defended passes. Give Kool Aid, man. Kool Aid was made out to be this five star elite defensive back, and he is. He's got to pick off. Johnson in this game, he's got to get a pick at some point this season. Just give him one. He don't even have to take it to the house, man. But this, you know, he's been around for a couple years. Uh, he's He was highly recruited out of high school. Give him a chance. Get him ready for the NFL. Give him a pick at some point. There's so many different names that have gotten a chance this year. Um you know, on defense. So just when you look at it, 369 total tackles defensively for Alabama this year, 17 sacks, you add it up all together. Those are good numbers through uh, six weeks of the season, five weeks, uh, five games. So it's really good. It's there, and they got to they gotta come through on this one. I think it's close, and I think you see some good defense, but a and is going to put some points up. I'm going to say it is a one-and-a-half-point spread. I'm going to say by four, Alabama could win. I'm going to say 31. Yeah, touchdown Alabama. 31-27 will be my pick. Alabama gets the road win but wins it close. I think the defense comes through. At the end, I don't think it's a game winning drive type of thing. It could be, but I think that the defense gets it done for Alabama. So, anyway, I love y'all. Y'all have a blessed weekend. Enjoy your college football. Hope you had a great week this week, man. I know I, I did. Got a lot done. I'm working hard too. We'll see you Saturday. We will be live for this game. And uh, 
I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be great. Can't wait to see who the crew on game day picks for this one, too. Uh, that's always interesting, but we'll play the outro and we'll get out of here. I love y'all. Peace. Peace.